The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, as we kick things off for the week on Monday, we had a real good day in the cattle markets. While we saw corded soybeans, row crops, kind of two-sided, slightly higher action there. Maybe some inner markets spreading even between old and new crop, while the wheat markets continue to be a uh, sour subject. Let's talk about market action as we kicked off the week. Joining us now, John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, thanks for being with us here today once again. And um, we can start in a number of different places. I, I guess, you know, overall, row crops, quarter beans, okay day on Monday. And as I mentioned, it felt like old crop contracts fared a little better than new crop. But all in all, not a not a terrible way to start the week in corner beans, John. Yeah, so, uh, definitely a good day to start the week here in terms of some of that price action in those row crops. And there's a couple of things that we're watching out there that we need to really keep a focus on. First off, obviously, is report week. We got USDA coming out with numbers on Wednesday, so that's going to be something maybe we're seeing some squaring up. I think we saw started seeing some positions move that way starting last week after we got those last commitment of traders and the amount that they got into the short side of that corn soybean markets here that, uh, you know, taking a look at that report coming, then obviously we got to acknowledge the forecast that is out there. Now, obviously, you know, hot temperatures um, is something this market will be very cautious of. Now with that, sounds like we're going to stay warm and wet on the initial part of this. So what's going to happen in the longer term? So maybe it's a point we get to, you know, we're in that June window. You know, typically we get some seasonal rally here. We'll see if we get some follow through off of this uh, over the next handful of days. And there might be just seeing some good money flow. Now, also on that old crop side and some of the reason we're seeing maybe some strength there. First off in corn, we've been seeing good demand. Uh, we've been shipping some corn out here, export inspections on Monday. We're very good again. Sales last week were very good. So we're seeing some old crop demand for corn as well as good strong ethanol grind because the ethanol export market's been very good for us as well. And then over on the soybean side, obviously we got that Brazilian tax situation last week. That also makes US more competitive on the global scale. We're seeing a nice move in the front end soybean meal as well today. You know, so maybe we're getting some business there that you know deep down we'll find the numbers down the road or maybe get some reported sales here you know on the overnight type sessions in terms of somebody stepping in buying some old crop beans yeah all good notes there and i think you know the overall summation for me is weather is going to be the main catalyst here and these row crop markets really over the next two weeks i think all in all could be you know, very much trade off of overnight moves with the latest forecasts. I know Monday will, of course, have the crop progress report, the first soybean ratings, too. So, you know, I think that just kind of speaks to overall in corn of beans. This is a time period to have those orders working because things can really ebb and flow between the overnight session and the day sessions, John. Yeah, we got a lot of volatility coming out. So probably in the next six, seven weeks here, obviously, in terms of the row crops and uh, markets. I mean, just look at what's on the calendar. USDA report today. We got Wednesday off next week for Juneteenth. You know, 4th of July is right around the corner. Put the acre number in there at the end of the month. Throw in the July report as well in terms of the WASDE numbers. You know, there's just a lot of things that could really move this market. And, and obviously right now, like I said, the biggest focus, maybe what does this forecast? Not so much for the next week or two we know it's going to be warm we know we got some moisture coming through some key areas over the next seven, five six seven days we'll see if how that builds but then what's beyond that and we are seeing some longer range forecasts that show the heat staying but then maybe starting to dry out and in a market that may need a little bit of weather premium in it we're maybe finally add some here now until we have some true change in terms of the supply picture you know where we truly see bushels lost or things of that nature and we still have a lot of corn on the front end, a lot of soybeans that, you know, soybean demand struggling that probably rallies are going to need to be the area we build defense. We get sales on the books. Uh, but in this window, if you got some sales in, you want to get a little paper over them, it's probably a great spot to own some shorter term calls. Uh, don't spend a lot on them in case they don't work, but at least give yourself that chance to stand in the marketplace, you know, for the next uh, basically couple of months is where we'll get this thing figured out what type of crop we could possibly have. Well, on the flip side, the wheat markets with nine sessions lower as of Monday's trade with more double digit losses. It feels like we've 
a couple of things. We're taking some of that weather premium maybe out from the Black Sea region, plus you got an advancing U.S. harvest in the Southern Plains, and then throw in this turkey news with them uh, stopping imports for a couple of months. You put all that Russia-Ukraine supply back on the world market that Turkey was probably going to import. And man, oh man, it just feels like uh, one, two, three, boom, 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 kind of weighing on this wheat trade right now, John. You know, and then throw the money flow on top of it. They push this thing back to a fairly short, small, short position in terms of they have the funds. They don't usually go long in the wheat market unless there's truly some type of an issue that's uh, bigger on the global scale. The Russian crop being small is a good issue, but at this time frame, maybe not enough because next thing you hear, you know, India's got a potential bumper crop for next year planned. Australia looks like they got a larger supply than next last year coming through. It's, you know, as soon as wheat prices go up, everybody in the world starts planting. Uh, so it gets to be one of those things that makes becomes a headwind. But, you know, you brought in some key points. You know, we look at that Turkey issue and them putting the increasing their tariffs to limit those imports coming in. You know, Turkey this is my kind of my opinion on it. But does that something tied to that Russian crop? Because Russia provides most of that grain to Turkey. You know, we've been kind of waiting for the maybe the Russians to make an announcement regarding exports. Maybe by limiting the Turkey, limiting their imports, keeps more supplies around for Russia to use and keep their food prices down. You know, so there could be some, you know, correlation there again obviously we'll watch and see you know the biggest thing i think you got going for against u.s wheat is the harvest right now kc wheat crop you know hot dry forecast kind of gets the harvest done if you know what i mean and then we got that hedge pressure coming in add in some technical weakness here as well you know i'm looking at some of these chicago contracts july's through the 200 day moving average today we'll see if that finishes you know, holds that as the week goes on. You know, those are some pretty big swing points in terms of price movements in these charts. Now, uh, to me, the wheat rally was a little bit of a hated rally, uh, you know, especially here for U.S. supplies. You know, we, we need to move this product. We don't get it done anyway against the global scale. Don't forget the fact that if you look at the U.S. dollar kind of breaking out a little bit to the top end of the range, I think that's going to help limit that wheat market as well here in the short term. So, so yeah, I got some definite money flow out of the wheat market today and at least some strength going into those other grains. Pretty exciting day in the cattle trade to kick off the week with feeders leading the way, good strength in uh, fat cattle as well. Talk about some of that market action in cattle trade on Monday and uh, what were some things you liked from what you saw? Well, the biggest thing is seasonality right now, too. We're in that, we're kind of in that sweet spot. We got through Memorial Day on demand. Father's Day is coming up this week. Fourth of July is right around the corner. You know, so there's some good retail side of the market out there. Choice carcasses, 317 midday today. So we're seeing that boost there. Cash trade at least stayed steady. I would like to see it gone higher last week. But maybe there's some anticipation here. Plus, throw in the fact that we're looking to getting off the end of the June contract now, way undervalued according to the cash market. We still got you know another couple of weeks on that. This is a seasonal window. We do start seeing some money flow in for maybe a summer high here. Now, good move today. We got a lot of work to do. There's pretty good resistance over top of those charts with those trend lines over those highs. That's an area we go challenge. You know, we failed there multiple times. Now, can we get through? If we do that, I really think we see some good money flow in. You know, we know the fundamentals are supportive in terms of cattle numbers and those things. My biggest concern is still the consumer dollar. And uh, you're know, just continuing to see food prices on the increase, continuing to hear about the debt situation growing for the U.S. for the U.S. consumer. Makes me a little nervous that, you know, could a good rally here might be a great spot. Make sure producers build that defense, especially out into the end of the year and into 2025, you know, just protect these prices. I'm just a little concerned about the overall state of the economy and where the U.S. consumer is. And if that consumer demand dries up a little bit, you're going to see this cattle market take it pretty quickly in terms of the, the money flow back out of that market. And I know in terms of the uh, economy and the outside markets, we got a Fed meeting this week. We got plenty of economic data coming out. So going to be a lot of news and plenty of volatility, I bet, in the stocks and more coming up here this week that we'll have to watch. Hog market, uh, just continuing to not find that support that we need. It feels like hogs kind of drifted lower Monday. Your thoughts, any notes for us in, in the hog side of the trade right now, John? Well, we're, we're watch the calendar here a little bit. June contract expires this week. Typically, we see some decent buying in that July contract when June comes off the books. Might be a great opportunity to look at the bull spread side of the market. You know, the July December spread is 
uh, come well off its highs. That might be a safer way if you want to play in the hog market a little bit, have that at least that backside leg on the negative. You know, so we'll have to watch some things there. Biggest thing for hogs right now, we need that cash market to find some footing starting to a little bit to seem like last week, but the index just can't seem to get any traction. Cash hogs still in the mid to upper 80s. Uh, you know, July's overpriced at 93 in that regard. So I'm a little cautious there. Uh, you know, the demand side, we've seen really good export demand, though, for pork. And that's something that may come to play a little bit in the near term here. But the last handful of weeks, strong buying of U.S. pork on the market at these lower price levels. Uh, so that's encouraging to see that when we get to a point, those exporters or importers, excuse me, will step in and pick up pork. So kind of at a spot, this market's a bit oversold, but we need a catalyst. We need something that wants to turn this market around. And maybe it's just as simple as getting the June contract off the book. Sometimes they just need that chance change to the next month and then we can see some money flow back into that marketplace but right now unlike cattle we need those fundamentals to kind of give it some gas i think here and they're just still lacking at this time frame any notes for us in the dairy trade john as we kick off the week you know the dairy market again is given some opportunities here and we've been you know very volatile obviously with the headlines out there regarding the avian influenza you know, there's still that is an overhead concern, you know, but we're back into that $20 handle. So maybe we're finding ourselves a bit of a price range here. We put the top in, now we can put a bottom in in this price range, you know, so there's still some ample opportunity out there. Biggest thing still comes down to demand, you know, price of cheese versus, uh, you know, the rest, the rest of the marketplace. Today, we get some boost in the milk prices, nice moving blocks and barrels. Still like to that block price, get over top that barrel price and that spread though. We're still struggling with that about seven cents apart now. So, but it is narrowing. So and that's one thing the market was probably watching. Does the block price come up or barrel price come down to fill that spread? At least at this stage, it looks like block prices are seeing the bid and get closing that gap, which helps support the milk price overall. John, good thoughts as we kick off the week of trade. Anything final you want to mention or reiterate to folks here today? You know, it's summertime and volatility kicks up a lot across a lot of different markets. You know, one thing to take a look at is look at the VIX. The VIX is the volatility index that works in the equity markets. Typically, it moves fairly aggressively in the June month. Right now, it's actually trading at a multi-month low. You know, so we've seen a lot of quietness as that stock market has continued to climb. That makes me a little anxious. Usually, as volatility increases, the selling pressure increases. So that equity market might be something we need to keep an eye on. And if obviously we see some money flow out of the equity market, whether it's the inflation data, the Fed making decisions, we do have Fed meeting this week too. You know, what are they gonna what are they saying about interest rates? It's not really what they're going to do, it's what they say. You know, that could bring extra selling pressure into the markets in general and some risk-off type trades. So keep that on your radar. I think this week, this next few weeks here, what happens in terms of the volatility in the markets in general, especially as we get into the summer months, which may be a little bit more thinly traded, which brings that volatility up. John, if folks want to reach out to you and get some advice there at Total Farm Marketing, multiple ways to get in touch with you. How can they reach you? Sure. Love chat with them anytime. Give me a call, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. And don't forget that website of ours, totalfarmmarketing.com. Feel free to reach out anytime. I know things are busy, but it's never, uh, you know, it's important to make a quick phone call if you have any questions or want to look at any ideas. John, always enjoy the conversation. Thank you for joining us once again here this week. We'll talk to you uh, in a couple of weeks. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Have a great couple of weeks. John Heimberg there once again with Total Farm Marketing joining us here for Market Analysis today on Market Talk. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.